because we all think differently today's video may be too much for some people so I'm uploading this to help you to understand the difference between motivation inspiration and obsession well if you aren't ready then you're not you must control your own mind not those of others that is what's going on in the world many people just don't get it that is not because they never educate they never actually educate themselves and now there's something big that is just starting to spread throughout the world and you will hear from me or someone else about what I'm trying to do here it'll be very should I say very no it'll be disastrous not only mentally but in many other areas of our lives as well stay tuned and enjoy the ride check it out motivation is just kindling it starts to fire but that kindling once one raindrop hits that little kindling mm -hmm. it's burnt out that's motivation so right now I'm giving you a spark you're giving people a spark there's a whole bunch of sparks out here it has to be something that's deep down inside. So, so, so motivation is like this. If you're married and your wife is okay and your bills are paid and the kids are good and the dog's good, if everything is good, you can find some motivation. Because while your life is happy, it's that motherfucker that wakes up in the sewer every fucking day, has nothing to fucking go home to, has nothing. Bills aren't paid, doesn't know when the fucking next meal's coming, doesn't know shit, and still says, fuck it. I am going to do what I have to do to get to where the fuck I have to go. That's the difference between motivation and drive, and then soon, obsession. Obsession makes a person, makes other people, like, so when you're around somebody that's obsessed, most people don't have any fucking idea what to call you. So they call you crazy. They call you crazy because they don't understand where you're trying to go, what the fuck you're trying to do, what you're trying to be. So to the normal person, which we're all normal, we're all very normal, what makes people different is a flip in their fucking mindset. Once they turn that mindset to a point where they no longer want to be so-called normal, that's when you start to find out that motivation is not enough. It's not enough. You have to be that person who no matter what's going on, if you're a big time runner, you don't care what temperature is. Like a whole bunch of people I run with, guess what they do every morning, every night, they look to see what the fucking temperature is going to be tomorrow. What's the temperature going to be? So I, am I going to run inside or I'm going to run outside? A person that's obsessed and wants to just get there, they don't give a fuck what the temperature is. They no longer care because they know no matter what's out there, no matter if it's snowing, if it's, if, if it's a damn tropical storm, if it's 20 below, they're going to run. They don't care. So there's no need to waste the time to look. I'm just going to go. And that's how you want to get your mind. I don't, it doesn't matter what the fuck's out there, what's in front of me. Because a motivated person is going to look. Because that weather is going to fucking change their motivation. Up or down. Oh, it's 70 and sunny. I'm motivated. Oh, it's 30 in a blizzard. Fuck that. I'm going to go inside. An obsessed person doesn't care. They get the fucking job done. And you know the power of that? Yes. I'm not saying do that. Not. A lot of people get my words and they twist them all up and they get all confused. Don't get confused. I think what I'm most interested in is what I think of as motivation. And... It's easiest for me to understand it in what I consider to be, I think it's my, my biggest problem in terms of a profession because I also think of that in terms of my identity. And so specifically... Identity from whose well, perspective? That's a, a huge question. And I can see that because when I'm thinking about a profession, and specifically the profession that I've been in and feel very much stuck in, is hospitality. And so that's very much about, it's very much about providing for other people, but at the same time, art has come up a couple times already. And I believe that I'm supposed to be an artist or that I am an artist. And I think that I believe that, but I would say that 
it all feels very confusing. And my specific question is, why is it that with all the knowledge that I've accumulated and how much I understand about creation and how much I practice creation, for instance, if I'm going into a shift at the bar and I believe that it's going to be chaotic because the place I work in is sometimes wonderfully chaotic in the amount of creativity it allows for. So I see that I'm being creative in that environment and I know that's important. But why, why do I feel a sense of, all right, I'm going to prepave for my shift tonight so that even if there's chaos going all around me, I can be a little oasis of order and then other people will appreciate that. And so I I see the, the way in which that works. And yet something as simple as getting together with someone to make music, it's like there's anti-motivation against that. Well, you've come back around to the word that we want to start with. You started with it and came back around to it, and we want to start with it. We can answer the question simply, and then we'll work through the details of it. It is what the topic is. You go general. It doesn't matter how big or important or unimportant it is. You go general. You just keep going general because you want to do two things. You want to soothe the way you feel, but you want to prepare the grid. You're wanting to soothe and prepare, soothe and prepare, soothe and prepare kind of boring it's not very motivating because you're not getting very specific but you do it anyway because you understand that the only thing that's preventing this stuff from flowing out there where you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it is that you've got a contradictory vibration going on which is always accompanied by negative emotion so you're soothing it soothing it soothing it and preparing the grid and then and then now the level of your grid has raised to the level of your vortex and now it starts flowing and at first it's slow it's steady though it's coming it's coming and as it comes it gains momentum and the ideas that thrill and surprise and delight you begin occurring in your experience in other words the momentum comes once you get the blockage out of the way We've never liked the word blockage in this context. It seemed appropriate to speak it in that way. There is really no blockage, but there is hindrance. There is resistance. Really good. Didn't you think that was good? We'll have more time to visit with you throughout the seminar with all of you. Don't worry. There is nothing that will be not addressed. We have lots of time and we're off to a very good start. Good time for segment of lunch.